Business is not for sissies, that I can tell you. Welcome back to my channel and we are tuned in for another episode of the Black Excellence series. If you have not subscribed yet, make sure that you click the subscribe button below and join the revolution. Okay, so we are going to hop straight into it. Sir, can you please introduce us to yourself, please? Who are you and where do you come from? Okay. Um, my name is Gilbert Ngobeni. Um, so I was born in um, Umalanga, in a, a small town called Bushbakuch. Um, that's where I grew up. Um, I, I spent uh, the later uh, part of my teen years in, in, in Tembisa, a small township in the Strand. I'm an entrepreneur, I'm a businessman. Um, yeah, and I think in a nutshell, um, I think that that's, that's who I am, yeah. In terms of your entrepreneurship side, can you explain that a bit? What businesses exactly do you own? Well, I actually own two businesses that I'm heavily involved in. And then the other part of the business is it's actually more a passive investment that I'm, I'm not so much involved in. Uh, it's more on the property side. The two businesses that I'm heavily involved in, the one is the clothing business. And I'm going to call it a, I'm gonna call it a fashion business. That explains why he looks so dapper today, guys. <laughs> in you, fact, every you. day, not just today. Like, I yeah. try. I try. I try to be dapper all the time. Um, yeah, relatively, I think I'm, I'm more relaxed today. Um, you know, normally you'll see me in ties and, you know, um, I can be over the top. Um, so that's the one side of the business. Um, I also have a, an IT and management consulting business. Um, that's the business that I've been running for the last uh, six, seven years. Prior to that, I was actually working for an international organization, um, one of the top five consulting firms uh, in the world. And then I decided to branch on my own um, in the last couple of years. The, the fashion business I've been running for the last 10 years. Can you explain how you came to be running such entirely different businesses? Yeah, that's, that's actually quite interesting. So, so I think it's, it's that the whole thing for me is based on the thinking that as a person, you can do pretty much anything. Wow. If you come to think of it, uh, if I had to give you a background of what I studied, I actually have a BSc degree in, in biochemistry which is uh, obviously completely different from the two things that I'm doing. Right. Um, biochemistry, I think when I studied biochemistry, I had an intention of um, doing medicine at that, at that point. Um, um, when I was doing my second year, I decided, no, nope, that's not the way I want to go. And then I converted that into a normal, you know, BSc degree. Right. Just when I graduated at the same university where I studied, they introduced a course that uh, was uh, designed for uh, people that wanted to switch into information technology, into IT. Right? I registered for that course. It was a postgrad course. Um, I did that in a year. Mm -hmm. That's basically how I ended up in, in IT. So I worked for, like I said before, I worked for an international organization. I spent about eight and a half years there right, as an IT and consultant. Yeah. When I left the organization, that's when I realized that no, 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 um, I'm actually not the one to, to be sitting and doing an eight to five for somebody. After right. eight years, you came to this realization? Uh, after eight years. Wow. Yeah. The whole frustration was there. You know, if you're an entrepreneur, some people are born entrepreneurs, some people realize it at a later stage in their lives. Right. Um, but with me, obviously, there, there, there might have been those, those frustrations and I could feel it that, you know what, um, it may look like my career is going in the right direction. Um, but there was that frustration because as you, you know, grow in your career, uh, you know, there are a lot of restrictions. They'll tell you, you know, you can do this, you know, can run another business while you, you right. are employed with us. Um, so when I left, um, I actually did independent consulting. So I, I pretty much did what I was doing when I was employed. Um, but I was doing, you know, I was sort of like freelancing, if you like. So right, right, would, right. Or just go, you know, to different clients and, and, and offer pretty much the same service. And um, I think that organization, um, to be honest with you, has uh, sparked my interest in the fashion business. IT? IT. Wow. Believe it or not. Okay. Um, so, like I said, they, it was an international organization that exposed us to, so we did a lot of traveling. Um, mm. I spent, uh, you know, quite a, um, a significant amount of time outside of the country. The dress sense there was, they were very strict about the dress sense. So, you know, um, you know, we had to be formal all the time. Back in the days, it was like that. Right. So I think it sparked that interest as well. And I, I wanted to know, so as I traveled to other countries, I wanted to know a lot more about, you know, the fashion um, uh, side of things for that country specifically. Um, 
and then yeah, a couple of years later, and then I decided no, let me let me pursue that side mm. right? because it was always in me, um, and 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 that's when the idea of Eben Swaf, and that's the company, that's the fashion company that I am running now. That's when the idea came. So as you say, you've managed to last in this industry for ten years. Mm. However, ten years ago, there was a very popular belief, especially in the black community, that things like design, art, those are not jobs or careers. How did you manage that expectation that people had of this is not a job, especially leaving what I'm sure people considered as a job being IT to now go into what was not considered a job being design? That's a very uh, valid question. Um, so, so you see this type of business, in, in my view, if you're in it uh, for quick profit, um, I can tell you now you, you'll face some frustrations because you'll end up getting to a point where you say, you know what, uh, this is not for me. Mm. Um, I, I, if I had to give any advice to anybody, I'll say, and it, it's not necessarily restricted to the, the fashion industry, I would say in any field that one decides to go into, uh, I think the key thing should be passion. So, so you look at passion, um, I, I would even say passion over um, the profit. Okay, it's that. Wait, let's, let's, let's highlight that one. Okay. Passion over profit. Correct. I don't think people think that way. And, wow. And, and, and for me, that's a very, very important book. So, so if you're saying, yes, I'm passionate about this thing, um, I think you'll have the drive. In some cases, you'll find that you actually, you know, if I look at my business over the last 10 years, um, I think for the first probably six, seven years, um, it, it was me just pumping money into the business. Mm. Right? So, you know, we started seeing some profits coming in probably in the last, you know, uh, three, four years. Right? Um, and I can tell you now, if it was not for the passion, I probably wouldn't be sitting where I'm sitting now. Right. right? So, um, in any um, industry that one gets into, uh, it must be driven by passion and, and you wanting to be in that form. And then you're going to have staying power in, 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 in that case. Um, so, so, so I think if, if I had to give advice, uh, that's, that's one main advice that I would give to anybody. <clears throat> so in your stellar 10 year career, or especially in design that, that is, um, what would you say, when would you say was the turnaround in your business? You say three years ago, uh, that's where profits started coming in. How did that happen? What was the turnaround that launched that new found success? Yeah. So, so again, it boils down to what I just mentioned now, that if you're passionate about something, you'll have the patience for it. Right? So, so you see, customers, and especially with luxury things, I mean, the stuff that we sell um, are not necessarily things that are affordable. Okay? Um, uh, but I think the critical thing is, is, is the ability to be able to maintain the customer. So, so, and, and that's based more on consistency. Right? Mm, yeah. So customers that started with us 10 years ago um, are still, are still ha happy with us. And, and, and if you look at the period, if I had to take that period, period and I say, let's say maybe four or five years, um, you know, it would have been us just getting customers to, you know, come and, 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 and be interested in our, in our product. Um, and over time, you get to a point where, because even the people that started with you 10 years ago are still with you, mm. you're getting more customers, and you get to, to a point where you, you have that confidence to say, now, um, you know, for me, it's not even about just making sure that uh, people trust what I do. Right. But let me make sure that I'm starting to make money, right? And then your strategy changes a little bit because now you're more worried about attracting more customers. You've managed to strengthen the... Your you brand. Know how to, yeah, you've strengthened the brand, one. Um, but you, you also have a strategy to be able to retain the existing customers. Right, right, right. So you get to a point and you can tell. I mean, sometimes, you know, it can be three years, sometimes it can even be 10 years, right? If people start trusting your brand, uh, in 10 years' time, maybe that's what it is. And then from there, you start basically just going out and getting new customers um, from there. So now for our final question. Entrepreneurship is not a joke. That being said, if you were to give just one word to end off to upcoming entrepreneurs or those who have just started, what would you say? Okay. Sort of like the biggest lesson that you've learned in your own journey. Yeah. Okay. So, so business is not for sissies. That I can tell you. Okay. Um, and I'm saying this. Uh, I don't mean to scare young people out there that might be interested to get into business. Uh, in fact, if it was according to me, um, I would say um, every young person um, needs to to 
make sure that they've got exposure in terms of how to run a business as early as as possible. Mm. Right? Um, I look at myself, I mean, at my age, I probably, you know, started following my interest in, in, in business uh, relatively very late in, in, in the game. Right? Uh, so if I had to give any advice to any young person out there, I would say, um, one, identify your, um, or identify things that you're passionate about, okay? Things that you think when you do, um, do not feel like you are working. Mm. But that's your passion. That's the first thing. Once you, you've done that, and I think that's the first step, once you've done that, think of ways that you can turn that passion into something that will be able to bring income for you. So okay. turn your passion into profit. Pro, pro, turn your uh, passion into profit. Okay, And that's a key thing. So, so ideally, you probably want to identify, you know, people might have you know, more than one uh, passions or things that they think uh, they could basically pursue. Identify those things. And if you have to execute them, I would say... Yes, because there's pressures of, of, of finances and stuff. Look at the one that you know that will be quick to execute and mm. that it will be able to bring some, some sort of like, uh, you know, financial relief. Um, once you've done that, you will be able to use those profits that are coming in to be able to pursue your next one. Right. Your next no, next question. So if you, if you had a portfolio of businesses, let's say three, four businesses, you must sit back and say, hey, are these the type of things that even if I didn't make money out of these things, I would still be able to pursue. Um, in my view, um, if you have that strategy laid out right from the beginning and as early as possible, and I think that's the critical point. Um, some of the mistakes that some of us have done is exactly that, that we started very late in the process, mm. where taking risks uh, become even more difficult. Yeah. Because risk is... Uh, business you have more to risk. lose at that time. Correct. Mm. You've got more to lose at that time. So start as, start as early as possible, identify things that you're passionate about, see how you can convert your, those, that passion into uh, profits and execute them accordingly and, and try and see how you can succeed from there. So this is how I like to end off my interviews. So I have 20 little strips here, right? Mm -hmm. And on these are tongue twisters. Mm -hmm. So you have 30 seconds, you can pick one, mm -hmm. you have 30 seconds to read one and try to recite it as best as possible. Okay? Okay. Sure. Yeah. Let see? me just get my time on. Yeah, this was not going to get any easier. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay. This might be the hardest part of the interview. Yeah, yeah. Are you ready? Ready. Three, two, one. Okay. Ah, uh, I've got two now, huh? Okay. Yeah. I've got more problems than I need. Okay. <laughs> I just need to read it out, yeah? Mm -hmm. How can a clam cram in a clean cream can? <laughs> <laughs> okay, now try say it as fast as you can. Okay, how can a clam cram in a clean cram? Okay, right, let's start again. How can a clam cram in a clean cram? How can a clam cram in a clean cream cram cram? Okay, how can a clam cram in a clean cram cram? Uh, Benita. <laughs> <laughs> okay. How can a clam cram in a clean cream cream or cream cream? How can a clam cram in a clean cream cream? Yes, there we go. Uh, okay. All right. <laughs> okay, that was great. My name is Gilbert Ngobeni, the owner of Urban Swamp. You are watching the Black Excellence series uh, brought to you by Benita Daniel. Perfect. That's it for today, guys. I hope you liked this video. Don't forget to comment, like, share, and subscribe. And if you want to see more of these videos, then comment down below. Peace and love, guys.